Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Introducing Soul Specific Principles presentation, Mary introduces the Soul Specific Principles session by examining the concept of Soul Specific Principles summarizing each principle and introducing other subjects regarding God, law, authority, and principles included in the next two-day session, recorded on the 11th of November 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. I'm going to now talk to you about our third and final session in this group. So I'll be introducing to you the soul specific principles. Now, I know you've all read your outlines and so I know you've all got sort of maybe a few questions, but this presentation is actually quite short. We've only got half an hour and I need to get through a fair bit. And just keep in mind that this is, like I said, with the order principles, this is just your little taster for what's to come and it's to sort of open you up to what what you're going to hear about. So hopefully um, we'll do okay <laughs> and you'll have plenty of time for your questions afterwards. Okay, all right. These principles that we're going to be talking about, that's not an exhaustive list of all of the soul specific principles but we've just chosen some that we feel are really applicable um, and are really important and these are principles that determine the laws that govern the potential for the human soul in the universe so this is where in a way things get really interesting because the the foundation principles and the order order principles they're all operating right now whether we want to or not. We can be more willing and more desirous in that process, but they're all happening. This set of principles that we're talking to you about for the next two days is all about your potentials, things that you can realise about yourself, things that you can't, ways that you can become to exist, that it's all up to you. It's just potential at this point. Okay. And it, these principles determine how you progress or evolve or regress and devolve in your life in this universe. And we'll talk some more about how the soul obtains these potentials. So this is where Jesus is going to be really specific with you as he discusses each principle. Okay? All right. Now... Before I launch into our diagram, I just want you to reflect back on our first principle from the second session, which was hierarchy. And remember in that session, we learned that all of God's creation exists within a hierarchy. There's higher and lower creations, isn't there? And if you think the universe that we live in, that we're consciously aware of right now, that's one of God's creations, isn't it? So it makes sense, doesn't it, that there could be a hierarchy of universes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's look at our preview, huh? Uh, at, at our diagram, which is a part of the preview. So we're very familiar by this point that we're talking a lot about God's character, attributes and desires. That's God, the infinite entity, has these character, personality, attributes and desires and that they govern the principles that God uses to create law or has used to create law. That's all clear and fine now by now, isn't it? Now, at this point, we're going to introduce to you a new universe, which is just a quiet thing to slip in on a Friday morning, isn't it? <laughs> By the way, there's another universe. <laughs> and this is really, so I'll, I'll put the two things here. We're now going to start to teach you or talk to you about the fact that there is an element of God's laws that relates specifically to a soul universe and that all souls exist within this 
soul universe. So the souls before incarnation and our souls, our very souls right now, are existing still in that soul universe. But we're not conscious of it until we reach the 36th, 37th, 36th <laughs> sphere. Uh, that's when we gain the consciousness of this soul universe. But until then, we're, we're still there, but we don't really know anything about it, which is why you can see why we haven't really talked to you about it before now. Because really, you're still trying to understand these other laws that govern the physical universe where your physical body and your spirit body exists. Okay? So that's the physical universe that we have some limited awareness of right now and which, in which houses, houses our spirit bodies and physical bodies. So in our physical universe, we're talking about the spirit world as well. Okay, so God's highest creation, the human soul, exists in the soul universe, if you want to call it that. And remember, this is, we're just making things, we're trying to give you concepts here. So it's not a literal diagram and probably not, you know, the most literal terms or whatever we could, like the phrases that we're using and the definitions. It's just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. There's different names and different ways to explain it, but hopefully this is a simple way for you to kind of grasp what we're, what we're going to be on about. Um, and so the lower creations, so... Even we can say that the human soul is a higher creation than our physical and spiritual bodies. They exist in this physical universe along with physical and metaphysical living creatures. <laughs> now, okay, we'll go to Amber, but as I said, this is not really a time for in-depth conversation about these concepts. Um, I was just curious if the universe soul layer, are you speaking of another dimension? No, I'm speaking of another universe entirely in which you have different perceptions. But again, I'm going to leave that for Jesus. He's going to talk to you guys about this more in detail in the transformation principles. But basically what I want to know is, I don't want you to ask me about further details, further complexities, implications. Is it conceptually okay with you? Yes. That's my job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So the principles that we'll discuss with you actually allow the half of the human soul and the complete soul, the potential of the unified soul, expression while connected to the spirit and physical bodies in the physical universe. So these, these principles uh, allow that to happen. They also allow the soul's potential in that soul universe that I just introduced you to and other universes that might come into existence or that might already exist that we're not currently aware of. You get, kind of get to start to have a concept of infinity, don't you? Like just how big infinity really is because the things just keep expanding and we're still not at infinity yet. Yeah. Okay. And they also allow the potential discovery of higher parts of the human soul which either come into existence or which have always been present but only exist in higher universes and therefore we don't have perceptions of at this point. And they even create the potential of the human soul to create universes, which is pretty mind-blowing for me. <laughs> all right. So everyone all right with that? Yep. Let's talk about some definitions. Now, these definitions are pretty critical to the rest of your, your discussions with Jesus, and he's not going to go over these definitions again. So this is why it is important for you just to understand them. Certainly not these first three anyway. So this is really what I've just explained to you. Hierarchical universes can be constructed, each one governing and containing multiple universes of the lower hierarchical type. And that makes sense, doesn't it, if, from what we understand from hierarchy? Is that there can be, and in fact, what has happened is the soul universe God created before the physical universe. It's higher in the hierarchy. It contains, remember we learned the most 
complex creations. It has the most complex laws. Therefore, it's higher in a hierarchy. And then the creation of the physical universe happened. Because remember, the souls existed in the soul universe first. So these hierarchical universes, that's just, I'm just giving you an example of one hierarchical universe. Soul universe, physical universe. Lower, u lower in the hierarchy, higher in the hierarchy. Make sense? Okay. Physical universes are the lowest human-based hierarchical universes and are the physical and spiritual universes, complete with all the spheres that you've been learning about for a number of years now, able to be perceived through the senses of the physical and spiritual bodies. That also makes sense. Physical universe, physical body, spirit body, that's the perception. Ability. Yeah, you're able to be aware of it. The soul universe is the current highest human-based hierarchical universe. It can only be perceived by the soul in a self-aware state, which Jesus has already talked to you about, is the unified soul. And it also contains unaware souls. So at the moment, you guys are unaware that you're in the soul universe, and there's even souls there that have not yet incarnated. And they're all existing there. So it's like one big happy soul family. <laughs> Everyone's there. Everyone's invited. Or everyone was created there. But yeah. All right. So all that's all right about universes. Yeah. Good O. Okay. Let's look at human will. So we talked to you a lot about will in your previous groups. And... What's going to interesting thing going to happen today about will and desire? So let's just go through this. Let's go through this definition. Human will is the genuine personal expression of the gift of free will. It's determined by the current soul-based emotional <coughs> condition. So it's determined by your current state. It's developed by desire. It's measured by its relative harmony with God's principles or disharmony and drives the thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, actions, allowance of inspiration and response to memories of the individual right now. Okay? Let's look at desire and aspiration now. So human desire or aspiration is the genuine expression of current soul-based faith. It can only occur in self-aware beings. It's measured also by its relative harmony with God's principles. It's e expressed as an intended or aspired to soul-based emotional state. It motivates future will-based decisions, choices and actions, and it differs from instinctual need. So you're starting to see now will is as it is now, desire, it's all future-based, but there's this very interesting part of this definition, isn't there, that it's the genuine expression of current soul-based faith. So that's your teaser for later on. Jesus is going to talk to you a lot about that. Okay? And sin, we've been talking to you a lot about this group as well, is the existence of will or desire in disharmony with God's principles whether the will or desire is acted upon or not. So the, now we're linking will and desire to sin. Okay. All right. Human redemption, and again, this is from your outlines. It's the process of paying the penalty for and removing sin from the human soul in order to recover the soul back to its created pristine condition. Pretty nice concept, hey? But it's a self-reliant process that does not involve repentance for wrongdoing and desiring forgiveness. <laughs> Sorry? It does. It does. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm saying things that aren't true. It's <laughs> that does involve repentance for wrongdoing and desiring forgiveness. But what I did want to highlight to you is that it's a self-reliant process. So that's a, key, that's a key distinction as well that you'll talk more about today. But just to say it again, it does involve repentance. <laughs> All right. 
Now, divine redemption occurs only through a personal relationship with God and is the process of willfully desiring and engaging God's help to remove sin from the soul. Now, in this process, we recognise that only God can remove all the effects of our sin. We ask God to help removing the causes of the sin and we want to receive God's truth on all matters and eventually obtain immortality. So now we're contrasting transformation and redemption there. All right. We're not, we're not, we're, we're contrasting human redemption with divine redemption. And now we talk about transformation. It's the potentiality offered to the human soul with a sincere and passionate desire to exceed its original created condition and potentials as a human and to allow God's personal love to be absorbed by the soul in order to transform the soul into an immortal divine creature with the potential of infinite expansion. Now these are some, well, these are some of the most complex principles of God's, God's creation and they're the most complex principles that we'll be speaking to you about in this group. All right, so the actual presentations we'll be doing. Remember in our foundation principles, what did we cover? Who remembers what they were? Love, truth, life, development, and scope, permanence and economy, function, permanence and scope. Very awesome, you guys. Order principles, we just talked about them in the homework. Hierarchy, governance, and compensation, yep. And they, can you see how they're all building, building on each other, aren't they? So it makes sense now, our soul-specific principles, we're going to be talking about will, desire, redemption, and transformation. And hopefully you'll start to see how all of these sort of fit together in, in terms of complexity as well. We're building in complexity and building in, term, in reference to your will. And how you will remember in the first ones we said this applies to everyone all the time and then we said now let's talk about some of these principles that are more affected by the or in more in relation to the human soul and the use of your will we, we started to bring that in here you're going to learn even more about that will and desire concepts and how that affects your potentials okay all right so we're going to be talking about will and that's driven by your current soul condition. And this is something interesting that Jesus is going to be bringing up with you. The difference between your current soul condition and your future soul condition, your current actions, your future actions, and how those things work together and how change actually occurs. Uh, as I said to someone in the pool yesterday, blew my mind. It was, it's huge like to consider the ramifications of will and desire and how they interact together in inside of us and how that affects the universe yeah okay I think that's all pretty clear I, I don't know if I need to read out all the slides you've read it in your outlines but it does this this thing of automatically it, it's affecting you or it's affecting what you're doing automatically all the time and we talked about that in your very first assistance group as well didn't we okay desire and that's driven by what the soul currently has faith in. And this is another interesting thing that we're going to be highlighting to you. The, the, we've talked a lot about faith in the previous groups, but now you're getting a chance to see, wow, faith, desire, how's that coming together? What's that really mean? And this is where you can have some good Q&A with Jesus as well. Okay. We'll talk about redemption. And this is about returning to how we were created, that six-sphere condition. Or it's about opening us up to that relationship with God, depending on how we approach it. Sound all right? Everyone with me? Yeah, that's good. And finally, Jesus will be talking with you about transformation. So this is really where we start to feel the immensity of the potentials that are offered to the human soul 
but it has to be the soul with the sincere and passionate desire to exceed its original condition and potentials. And you can sort of start to see why we've emphasised self-responsibility as well, because there's got to be a sincerity of desire that grows within us um, for all of these principles before transformation even becomes a possibility for us in our future. Um, it allows God's personal love to be absorbed by the soul in order to transform the soul into an immortal divine creature with the potential of infinite expansion. So this is a concept that Jesus has spoken about a lot of times in a lot of different ways in the past, but this is where we start to learn how this, re this is a principle, really, of God's, how this is a reflection of God's nature and what it's really all about. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the most complex of all principles, these transformation principles, which is why we've left it to last and given you some other foundational things to build upon in, in your understanding of really what's involved. Okay. We're going to have a couple of other discussions. One of them is today on God's authority, which you've already started to have some reflections about authority, haven't you, in your homework from the last session. And, um, yeah, I think it's a really interesting discussion as well, this one that we've prepared. It is going to talk about this subject of loving authority. What does that really mean? Often we think authority is not a loving concept, don't we, as we learned about in our hangover. But what's that really look like, loving authority? What God's authority is and this distinction between what God has authority over and what we have authority over. And often we're trying to flip those, aren't we? We'd like God to have authority over things that we don't really want to have authority over but in reality we do and then we'd like to have authority over things that God's saying nah -uh, that's my that's my area yeah you don't get to have authority there yes and we're going to talk about the results of the person your personal acceptance or rejection of God's authority and that's a, that's a really important motivator if you think about it. If we start to understand, well, what's going to happen if I reject it or what is happening because I'm rejecting it or what's the potential of what could happen if I accept God's authority? Yeah, okay. And our final presentation for the whole group is going to be knowing and loving God. And you can see how everything we've presented up until that point is all about trying to open you up to that desire, trying to show you the benefits of knowing and loving God. And um, yeah, so in that talk, we're going to look at the methods and processes that can be used to discover and understand God's loving laws. And you'll learn that what we've been doing here today is, is attempt, or this week has been attempting to help you discover and understand some of God's laws. But there's a lot more that you can do privately and there's a fast track and a slow track and a kind of a middle track um, just depending on how self-responsible you want to be in this process yeah okay and um, Jesus will present the only possible successful method the surefire one that in the end you're gonna have to employ if you really want to <laughs> any guesses <laughs> okay <laughs> and and we'll introduce the concept that knowing God's principles creates a true awareness of sin. Because remember, our next assistance group is going to be all about sin, understanding sin and where it comes from. So that, again, is just opening you up to our very, our very next group in the series. Okay. So that's what Soul Specific Principles is going to be all about. Um, it's a bit of a... As I said, a bit of a test, a taste here. Uh, test. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with me and my word <laughs> finding abilities this morning, but anyway. Um, okay, so just a reminder, we went through this diagram. You're not going to see this diagram on the screen again um, throughout the rest of this session, but this 
hopefully gives you some kind of conceptualization now visually of what it is Jesus will be talking through with you. Hey, he might flick it up again, but but really just to sh- this is your just to show you how it sort of fits together conceptually. And we've put the physical universe in there. It's contained within the soul universe, and the soul universe is actually higher in the hierarchy. It's a higher creation than any physical universes. Yep, all right. Okay. So, again, these principles we'll be discussing are some of the principles that determine the laws that govern the potentials of your soul within the universe, how you progress or regress, and how you can get to obtain some of these potentials. So how you can start to act and feel and do to help you obtain some of these potentials. All right, you guys. Again, um, we've said here that you're going to be talking about the definition of objectives, the application, what it all means about God. But in reality, as you've found by now, there's not enough time for that to happen. So there's a summary, and then what I've noticed is you guys are asking some really good questions in your Q&A, which helps to bring out some of those other points that we haven't had time for. So I encourage you to keep up with that. Um, I think that the calibre of questions has been really quite good in helping Jesus to define more of what he's wanted to share about. Yeah, okay. And as, as I just said, it's a very basic presentation of the subject in each one. We were just remarking that we could spend like years and then we went, oh, we did spend years <laughs> exploring and discussing every principle and learning about it. But um, yeah, if you like, this whole group is just an opportunity to sort of open up more to your own process of exploration and discovery. Hopefully we're inspiring you in that direction. Okay, so we are now in the soul specific principles session and your next presentation will be human will principles. I need to remind you, we're going to have a 10 minute break now, so we'll come back at midday. Um, Your next presentation with Jesus is going to go for an hour and 20 minutes. We've allowed longer for these two principles. You're going to be talking about human will and human desire back to back. So take the opportunity to really empty your bladder. It's the longest stretch you'll have have gone, this group, Um, but it's only 10 minutes longer than the other ones. So yeah, so we'll see you in 10, hey?